Hey everyone, it's me, Sarah here from Wholesale Ted, one of the largest YouTube channels dedicated to giving you actionable advice on how to build a real money-making business. And today we have one of the most highly requested videos. We are doing an updated for 2019 Ali Dropship tutorial with WooCommerce. Yes, yes, not everyone likes Shopify and I completely understand. And so if WooCommerce is your e-commerce store platform of choice, this tutorial is for you. If you don't know what Ali Dropship is, it is my number one recommended AliExpress dropshipping plugin for WooCommerce. Ali Dropship does two things. Firstly, it makes adding products from AliExpress into your store easier and faster. And secondly, it also semi-automates the fulfillment process. So when a customer purchases a product from your store, Ali Dropship is going to streamline and make it faster to order the item and get it shipped out to your customer. This is going to be a 17 step process and for each step I'm going to be switching over to my screen and showing you how to complete each step and follow along with me. If you want to jump ahead to a particular part of the video, I'll have timestamps in the video description below. Alright, let me switch over to my computer and give you a preview of the store that we are about to build. All right, so this here is the store we are going to build. As you can see, our homepage is a simple clean design featuring a splash image plus different featured product categories. Showing off products is the easiest way to design a simple yet professional looking store. And if we scroll back up this page, you'll see that our store features the working menu with a drop down sub menu under products. And if we click on the travel mugs product category, you'll see we have different category pages for our different types of products. And if we click on the camera lens travel mug, you'll see that we've got a custom product page for it featuring a product description we've added. And at the bottom of the page, it has automatically added some recommended products to help upsell our customers. And if we scroll back up, you'll see we've got an additional information tab, which I'll be showing you how to edit later in this tutorial. And if we scroll back up to the top of the page, you'll see that as part of this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to add in a working image gallery. And to show you that the store works, I'm going to add this product to my cart now and then check out with it. As you can see on this checkout page, we've got a working payment system of PayPal. And even if our customers don't have a PayPal account, they can still check out using their credit card as a guest. So that's the store that we are going to build. Let's get started. One, set up the web hosting and the domain name. So this tutorial has been designed specifically to be both budget friendly and also beginner friendly. And so I have shopped around for the easiest, cheapest web hosting solution for beginners to use. And to me, the number one web hosting platform that I've found to be both low cost yet easy to set up for beginners is SiteGround. Of course, if you're more experienced and you have your own preferred platform, you can always use that. To follow along with this tutorial though, you will need to sign up for a SiteGround hosting account. And you can find a link on how you can do that in the video description below. Please note that it is an affiliate link, which means we may get commissions if you use it. Using it is entirely optional, but we always appreciate it because affiliate links help us keep our YouTube videos free. A one month subscription to SiteGround usually costs $4.95 a month for a one year upfront plan. However, sometimes you can catch it for $3.95 a month. So if you stumble upon a deal like that, I highly recommend snapping it up fast. If you're super strapped for cash, you can purchase a one month plan, but it has a huge $14.95 fee attached to it. So I don't recommend buying it. To keep things super simple, as part of this tutorial, I'll also be purchasing the domain name with SiteGround as well. Now yes, you'll save a couple of dollars if you buy it on, say, Namecheap, but buying it with SiteGround will remove the process of having to connect the two up. And my goal here is to make it as simple as possible for you to get started. Alright, with that out of the way, I'm going to switch over to my computer now and show you how easy it is to do this. Go to the SiteGround.com homepage and click Get Started. Next, select the startup plan by clicking Get Plan under the startup option. Enter your preferred domain name, then click Proceed. Provide your account information by typing in your email address and password. Confirm your password. Next, fill in your personal information, first name, last name and address. You'll also need to enter your credit card information into the payment information section. Scroll down and click on period under hosting services. Now, since I'm just setting this store up as an example, I'm going to select the trial, but the most cost effective option is the 12 month option and it's usually what I would recommend. Scroll down, then click the box to confirm that you have read and agreed to the terms and policy, then click the pay now button. Once you successfully submit your order, click proceed to customer area. 
Tick the I don't need help now box, then just click confirm. Tick the terms of service box, and then just click complete setup, and then that's it. And here is a bonus tip. When you are choosing a domain name, do not, I repeat, do not choose anything but a .com name. I've had .store email me to ask me to be an influencer for their domain name, but there is no way I'll recommend it to my subscribers no matter what they would pay me because I think it's a terrible idea for most people to use it. Not only do top level domain names like .com perform better in search engines like Google for free traffic, but they are also trusted and respected by consumers. And here is something else, you might be like me and live outside of the USA. I live in the beautiful country of New Zealand. And you might be thinking, should I purchase my country specific domain name? For New Zealand, that is .co.nz, for Australia, that's .com.au, and so on. Well, the answer is this. If you plan to sell outside of your local country at any point, if you plan to sell worldwide, the answer is no. The .com domain name is the most universal and everyone around the world respects it and understands it and is not going to be put off if they arrive at a store that has it. So stick to it. Step two, install WordPress on your site. So the e-commerce platform that we're actually building our store off of, which is WooCommerce, is actually a plugin for the free open source content management system, WordPress. Now, WordPress on its own turns our website into a blog. Later, we will add the WooCommerce plugin to it, which will add e-commerce functionality to our site. And luckily, SiteGround makes it very easy to install WordPress. So let's do that right now. In your SiteGround dashboard, click My Accounts. Then click Go to See Panel. If you get a box like this, click Proceed. Now find the WordPress installer icon under WordPress Tools. Click the Install button. Now on here, you'll want to either edit the WordPress login details to something you'd like, or write down what they have created for you automatically. And once you've done that, click Install. Now I wanted to show you this in full, but I didn't want you to have to wait the three to four minutes it took, so I sped this portion up for the video. <laughs> Once it's done, click the administrative URL and then select exit. And after you do that, you'll be redirected to your WordPress dashboard, which is where we want to be for the next step. Step three, install WooCommerce on our site. So yes, now it's time to add the e-commerce functionality to our store. To do this, we are going to install a free plugin for WordPress, WooCommerce. And yep, SiteGround also makes this super easy. Let me switch back now and show you how simple it is to do this. Go to the SiteGround.com My Accounts page and click Go to Admin Panel. Type in your username or email address and password, then click Login. Click Exit. You'll then be redirected to the Dashboard. In the Dashboard menu, click Plugins. Then click the Add New button. Go to the keyword search box and type in WooCommerce. Select WooCommerce in the search results and click Install Now. Once it's installed, click Activate. Select your country from the drop-down list. Then type in your address, city, and state. Type in your zip code. Select US dollars as your preferred currency, and let's select physical products as the type of products we want to sell. And then click Let's Go. In the Payment tab, tick the button for the PayPal payment option to disable it. Then click Continue. In the Shipping tab, choose Free Shipping as the shipping method for both your country and for locations not covered by your other zones, then click Continue. In the Recommender tab, uncheck MailChimp from the Feature Recommendations, then click Continue. Click Skip this step. Woohoo! You've successfully installed WooCommerce. Click Visit Dashboard to go back to your WordPress dashboard. Step 4. Install the Ali Dropship plugin. All right, it's time to add the magic sauce to our store. We are going to add the best AliExpress dropshipping plugin for WooCommerce, and that is Ali Dropship. As I said earlier, not only is Ali Dropship going to make it fast and easy to add products directly into our store from AliExpress, but it's also going to make fulfilling our customers' orders faster and simpler as well. Ali Dropship costs $89 as a one-off fee with no ongoing monthly fees. Just buy it and you're done. And here's a quick tip. If you ever have any issues with installing Ali Dropship or following the Ali Dropship parts of my tutorial, the best way to get in contact with the support staff to get help is to send them a message via their Ali Dropship Facebook page. All right, I'm gonna switch back now and we will complete this step. Start by clicking Buy Plugin in the Ali Dropship homepage. 
Then click buy now for only $89. Now type in your email address, enter your credit card details. Click complete order. Next, click continue to skip this page. In this page, scroll down to the Ali Dropship WooCommerce plugin section and click download plugin. Wait until the plugin download is done. Go back to the WordPress dashboard and click plugins in the menu. Click add new. Then click upload plugin. Click choose file. Then select the Ali Dropship plugin from your download folder. Click open. Click install now. Wait for the installation process to finish. Once done, click activate plugin. Wait for a few seconds and there you have it. Your Ali Dropship plugin is now activated. Step five, install the Ali Dropship Chrome extension. Later on in the tutorial, we are going to be using this Chrome extension that we are installing now to greatly speed up the process of adding products to our store. This of course means that if you don't have the Chrome browser, you are going to have to install it. <laughs> I will have a link to how you can install Chrome if you don't already have it in the video description below. And of course, I will also have a link to the Ali Dropship Chrome extension as well. All right, let's do this. In the Chrome Web Store homepage, type in Ali Dropship in the search bar. Select this one from the search results, then click Add to Chrome. Click Add Extension. You will then see a pop-up confirmation that the Ali Dropship extension has been added to Chrome. Next, click the Ali Dropship icon in the top right corner of the page. Then enter the URL of your store's website. Click Add. And that's it. You've installed the Ali Dropship Chrome extension. Step six, install the Ali Dropship theme, Shopper. Now, one of the quirks about using Ali Dropship is that you can't just use any WooCommerce theme that you find out there on the internet. Instead, you need to use either a theme Ali Dropship have developed or one of their approved WooCommerce themes. Luckily, a great free theme is available, Shopper. And from my experience, it's the easiest free theme for beginners to build a simple, clean looking store. And look, they even used my favorite example tutorial niche for their preview store. Mugs. <laughs> they may have gotten some inspiration from my YouTube channel, but regardless, this theme looks great. So we are going to use it. And yes, I will have a link to it in the video description below. All right, let's install it now. Go to the themes page on alidropship.com. Scroll down to the section for recommended themes for the Ali Dropship plugin. Select the shopper theme. Next, click download. Wait for it to finish downloading. Now go back to your WordPress dashboard and click Appearance. Then click Themes. Next, click Add New. Click Upload Theme. Scroll down and click Choose File. Select the file in your Downloads folder and click Open. Click Install Now. Wait for a few seconds until the installation is done. Now click Activate. And as easy as that, you have successfully installed the Shopper theme for your store. Step seven, update the Ali Dropship settings. All right, so in this step, we are going to be making a few tweaks to our Ali Dropship plugin settings. Some of them are gonna be more crucial than others. Arguably, the most important change that we are going to make is that we are going to override the customer's phone number with our phone number instead. The reason why we want to do this is because we want our AliExpress supplier to call us if they are having an issue delivering the package, not our customer's phone number. The second most important change that we are going to be making is that we are going to set it that if our AliExpress supplier runs out of stock, that the quantity for that item in our store immediately gets set to zero. And of course, that's obviously extremely important because we don't want to be selling phantom items that don't exist. Otherwise, we are going to have to refund our customers' orders, and that's not going to be a good look for PayPal and Stripe. So let's go and update these settings now. On the dashboard, click the Ali Dropship Word button, then click Settings. If you haven't entered your license key, you'll need to do so now, like I did here. So just go back, copy it, and then paste it into the box on the page, and then click Activate. This will confirm your purchase, and then you'll be able to use the plugin. When it's successfully activated, you'll see a green congratulations box. All right, now click on Settings again. On this page, you'll want to update the same settings I did. Be sure to enter in your phone number as the default phone number. This is what your AliExpress supplier will call if there is a problem with your package. You'll need to turn this feature on. You'll also want to make sure that you have a note like this in the custom note for supplier. Ali Dropship right now are including one by default, which is a nice addition. And be sure to tick all the product images and then click Save Changes. All right, now click the Updates button under Settings. 
go ahead and make the same changes I'm doing here. The most important thing we want to do is remove products when they run out of stock and to show out of stock variants as being, well, out of stock so that customers don't order phantom items. We're also going to set it so that if the price changes for a product on AliExpress, Ali Dropship will let us know in case we want to increase or decrease our product price to match. And when you're done, just click Save Changes and then that's it. Step 8. Add a custom logo and colour scheme. Okay, so to complete this step, you are going to need to have a logo for your store. Personally, I recommend that if you aren't a graphic designer, you get a logo made on Fiverr. You can get one made for just $5 plus transaction fees. I'll have a link to Fiverr in the video description below. Please note that is an affiliate link. Secondly, you are going to need to choose one color to be your store's main color. We are going to be using this color throughout this tutorial to add personality to our site. For me, my store is selling coffee items and accessories. And so the color I chose is a coffee bean brown. You should choose a color that matches the types of items that you are selling in your store. So once you have chosen your color and got your logo, you can follow along with me. In your WordPress dashboard, click Appearance, then select Themes. Choose the theme you want and click Customize. Click Select Identity. Click Select Logo. Now click Select Files. Choose your logo from your computer files, then click Open. Wait for it to be uploaded, then click Select. Now you can crop your image to your desired size. Once done, click Crop Image. Next, let's remove the site title and the tagline. Click the Back button. Select Header. Then click Hover Color. Select the color you want or you can paste the color code to make sure you use the same color scheme for your website. Go back and choose Footer. Select color for the background by selecting from the custom colors or pasting your color code. Go back and select color. Click this under the link slash accent color. Select from the custom color or again paste the color code uh, for your main store's color. Go back and select buttons. Select color for the background by selecting from the custom colors or again pasting the color code. Finally, go back and click publish. Once it says publish, that means you have successfully edited the color scheme for your website. Step 9. Add products from AliExpress into your store. Alright, we are going to make use of that Chrome extension that we installed earlier. So if you haven't already, open up your Chrome browser now, have AliExpress.com in one tab and have your store admin area open in another tab and then you can follow along with me. Go to AliExpress.com and search for the item you want to add. I'm going to be adding in two example products, the first being the camera lens travel mug. Next, click orders. Select the one you want from the search results, then click the Ali dropship icon to add the product to your store. Then let's type in the next example product that I'll add in the search bar. Again, click orders. Select from the results and then add the product to your store by clicking the Ali dropship button. Go to your WordPress dashboard and click products. And look at that, the products we added from AliExpress can now be seen in our products page in our website. Yay! So go ahead and add in all of your products now. Step 10, add product categories. As part of this example tutorial store, I've added three types of products. I've added coffee mugs, I've added travel mugs, and I've added coffee spoons. And so I'm gonna create a category for each of these types of products. You might have more categories or you might have less. That's absolutely fine. Create the categories that are right for your store. So let's do this. In your WordPress dashboard, click products, then select categories. Let's add in a new product category by typing in its name. Now, of course, my first category is coffee mugs, so that's what I'm going to type in. I'm going to type in coffee mugs. Under slug, type in your category name, separated with dashes. Now click add new category. Again, add your next category, and so for me, that's coffee spoons. And again, under slug, type the category name, separated with dashes. And then again, click add new category. Repeat this process for all of your categories. My final category is going to be travel mugs. So I'm going to add the name of it and the slug and then click add new category. And that's it. We've successfully added new product categories to our store. Step 11, create an about us page. For this step, we're just going to be adding in a simple about us page with a photo and some text. So make sure you've got some text prepared in advance that explains why your store is unique and special. In your WordPress dashboard, click pages. Then click add new. Close this and then proceed to enter About Us as the title of the page. 
Next, click this Add button. Select Damage. Click Upload. Next, choose the image you want to use, then click Open. Now I've got some copy I've written in advance that I'll be using as part of this tutorial that tells the customer what makes Brew Treats unique and special as a store. To add it, hover your mouse below the picture until you see the plus icon and then click it. Select the paragraph button. Type in your page copy for your About Us page. Then click on the image and select the Align Left button like I've done here. Then after that, you just need to publish the page. And that's it. It's time to move on to the next step. Step 12, create a Contact Us page. For this step, we're going to be installing a simple, free WordPress plugin, Contact Form 7. This is going to let us add a nice little Contact Us form so that customers can email us. In the WordPress dashboard, click Plugins. Then click Add New. Search for the Contact Form in the search bar. Select Contact Form 7 from the search results, then click Install Now. Wait for a few seconds, then click Activate. Check for Contact Form 7 from the list of plugins, then click Settings. Copy the short code. Now go to Pages. Click Add New. Type in Contact Us in the title box. Next, paste the short code under the title. Then click Save Draft. Click Preview to see how your contact page looks to make sure there aren't any glitches there. Then click Publish and that's it. You've added a Contact Us page to your store. Step 13, add shipping for your products. For this step, I'm just gonna set up one shipping option, free shipping, but you can set up however many that you want. If you're new to the world of e-commerce though, I think it's a really great idea to just have one shipping option, that being free shipping, and then to bump up the price of your items slightly to cover the cost. That way, you don't have to set different shipping options for different items, keeping things simple for you. Plus, it also means that you get the benefit of being able to market your store as having a bonus, and that is free shipping. Now, yes, your store doesn't truly have free shipping because you've simply bumped up the prices of your items to cover it. But you know what? Your customer doesn't know that. So I'm gonna switch back to my computer and show you how to do this. In your WordPress dashboard, click WooCommerce and then select Settings. Click the Shipping tab, then click Add Shipping Zone. Next, enter the zone name. Let's type in United States. Select the zone region you want to ship to from the drop-down list. Click Save Changes. Next, select the shipping method. So we're gonna choose free shipping. Click add shipping method. And there you have it. You have now added a free shipping option for your store. Step 14, add PayPal as a payment gateway. Now there are two main types of payment providers out there that I recommend that you use. The first is PayPal and the second is Stripe. For this tutorial, I'm just gonna to stick to adding PayPal because it's available for the most countries and this tutorial is here to be universal for everyone. But if Stripe is available for you, I highly recommend that you install it as well. All right, let's do this. In your dashboard, click WooCommerce, then select Settings. Next, click the Payments tab. Tick this button next to the PayPal payment method option, then click Setup. Now scroll down and enter the PayPal email that you want to use for your store. Then scroll down and click Save Changes. And that's it, you've successfully added PayPal as a payment method for your store. Step 15, how to customize your homepage. The simplest, easiest way to create a clean, professional looking homepage with no previous design experience is to simply showcase your products on it. And luckily, Shopper makes this very easy to do. What we're first of all gonna do is we're gonna add a nice splash image that is going to feature something related to our store. For me, it's gonna feature coffee since, well, my store is selling coffee items and accessories. And we're also gonna be adding some text on there to advertise our store. You can find lots of incredible royalty-free images that you can use for your splash image at Pixabay. Next, we are then going to showcase some of our products. Having a big splash image followed by a showcase of products is a proven effective way to create a professional looking homepage. So let's do this. In your WordPress dashboard, click Pages. Then click Add New. 
The page title is going to be the main headline text on your splash image. I just wrote something really quick. <laughs> I would spend more time thinking about it if this was real. And so do what I did here. Type in some text below the headline. This will be your subtext. And a good idea is to add a call to action, like shop now underneath it. Center it and then hyperlink it to your products page. Afterwards, click featured image. The featured image is actually going to be that big splash image. Upload that picture now. Next, select Page Attributes. Then click this and select Home Page from the drop-down list. Now click Publish. Again, click Publish. Next, click Settings. Then select Reading. Select a static page. Then click the drop-down box for the home page and click the page we just created. Now click the website name and then click Visit Store. Click the home icon. This is how the home page of our site looks like. Click the website name to go back to the dashboard. Click Appearance, then select Themes. Find the Shopper theme and then click Customize. Click Shopper Homepage. Go ahead and uncheck these components so that you're only showing your most recent products. And as easy as that, you have customized your homepage. Step 16, update the product pages. This step has definitely changed a lot since my 2018 tutorial. So if you watch that one, I strongly recommend that you watch this step. As part of this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I update two product pages. The first is for this product here, this camera lens travel mug. It comes in one color, black. That means that this product here is a single variation product because there's no other sizes or colors for it. Next, I'm gonna be updating the product page for this item here, the self stir mug. This product here comes in multiple colors. Editing the product page for a product with multiple variations versus a single variation is very different. So I strongly recommend that you watch me update both. And I just wanna say that this is the part of the tutorial where most people stop and they give up. They give up because admittedly, it takes quite a lot of time to set up individual product pages for all of the products that you're selling in your store. But don't let that stop you. Once you've gone in, I've dated your product pages and they're selling, it's going to be well worth it. So let me switch over and I'll show you how to do this. On the dashboard, click the products button and then select the first product you want to edit. So you'll see that Ali Dropship plugin literally pulls the same product title that the AliExpress listing has. Delete this and add your own product title. And it also pulls the exact same product description from the AliExpress listing too. Delete this and put your own description. I wrote a short one out in advance to use for this example. Something I strongly recommend every dropshipper does is put a shipping disclaimer in their description and bold it like I've done here. Then scroll down to product data. Now because this product is a single variation product, I'm gonna change it to be a simple product. And here is where you enter its price. If you don't want the product on sale, don't enter a sale price. It is optional, you can leave it blank. Next, you'll want to click Attributes. Now, this has to be one of the biggest changes Ali Dropship has made over the last year that have made this process simpler to edit. These attributes will show up in the Additional Information tab on your product description page. These attributes are pulled directly from AliExpress. Most product attributes on AliExpress are very poorly written since, well, English isn't the first language for most AliExpress suppliers. So for a couple of these, I chose to keep them, but I edited the text a bit. But for most of them, I opted to hide them from my product listing. Go through each one and choose whether to keep it or not. If you don't want to keep it, then untick the visibility checkbox. This will remove it from the page. Each product will have its own set of product attributes, so I can't tell you which ones to add and which ones not to add, unfortunately. It's entirely up to you. Most of the time, you'll probably want to remove the vast majority. So that the additional information tab isn't empty, I do recommend having at least two of them visible. And remember, you can edit them like I've done for some here. For example, I kept the material attribute, but added in that it's also made out of food grade plastic. And when you've done that, just click the Save Attributes button. Okay, so now we're gonna add the short product description. Type three to four bullet points in here like I did that describe and sell your product to the customer, highlighting why they should purchase it. This description is going to go right next to your image gallery and I find bullet points usually work the best conversions wise here. Once you've finished adding in your bullet points, head over to the product gallery. You can delete photos you don't like and also reorganize their order by dragging around the photos like I did here as an example.
So this big picture here is what's going to be your main product image. Something you can actually do is edit the photo itself. And so that's what I did while filming. I edited the photo to remove the JC Bros logo. You should only use photos that don't have logos or have them edited out like I did here. Removing the logo was simple. I just drew over it with a white pen. And once finished, I click save. And check it out, the picture no longer has the logo. Perfect. Now just come up to product categories and tick which category your product belongs in. And then just click publish. And that's how you edit a simple product with no variations. Now I'm going to go and edit that self-stir mug. The beginning is going to look the same. I'm going to be going in and removing the product title that Ali Dropship has pulled from AliExpress and add in my own one. And I'm also going to remove the product descriptions that Ali Dropship has pulled from AliExpress and add in my own one as well. I'll be honest, I didn't really give my product page copy or any of the copy for this example tutorial too much thought. This isn't a tutorial on how to write great product copy, although something like what I wrote is not actually too bad. <laughs> All right, so come down to product data. Keep it as a variable product this time. We still need to edit the attributes, so click on that tab. Now again, I went through each of these attributes. I kept some, although I modified some, but most I hid. You don't need to worry about the color attribute. I don't recommend changing that. It doesn't show up to the customer. It's by default hidden and it's something for admin reasons to keep there. So even though you can choose to delete it, I don't recommend doing so. And while I'm doing this, I'd like to just give everyone a tip. If you're stuck on what to write for your product description, it's a good idea to go and see if your product is listed on Amazon. If it is, see what the Amazon product listing is. Not only that, but read the reviews people posted. See why people bought the product and why they like it the most and place the emphasis on those things in your description. For example, the camera lens travel mug is listed on Amazon and if you read the reviews on Amazon from customers, most people bought it because of how realistic it looks and so it makes for fun pranks. People see you drinking out of it and think it's actually real. This realism is something I focused on in my description. A lot of people also bought it as a gift for friends and family members who are photographers. And I've never met any photographer or any videography geek who doesn't love it. And so I placed emphasis on that in my product page copy as well. It's a good idea to browse through the AliExpress reviews for the same reason. See what elements of a product that people love the most. Then when writing your product copy in both your main description and in your bullet points, place emphasis on those elements. And the shipping disclaimer is very important, and don't worry, it doesn't impact conversions as much as you would think. All right, so again, when done, click Save Attributes. This time, click on the Variants button in the Product Data section. Now, here you can remove any variant you don't want. This product had 12 colors. Now, you might not want to sell all of those colors, and that's okay. I'm going to remove all but four of them for this example. You might want to keep all of them, and that's also fine, but often AliExpress products come with really strange, weird variants, and you'll likely want to delete those. And so that's how you do it. You just click the Remove button next to it, like I'm doing here. I'm going to remove all but the blue, green, red and black colors for this mug as an example. Now to update the price, click on a variant and then set the regular price and if you want to, set a sale price. You need to update the price for every single variant that you're selling. So for example, I'm setting each mug to be priced normally at $19.99 but currently on sale for $14.99. This is the big difference between setting up a simple product with no variations like that camera lens travel mug and then setting up a product with multiple variations such as this mug here that comes in different colors. This means that you can price each variant differently as well. So let's say that you had a big mug and a small mug. You might price the big mug higher than the smaller mug. So there's a lot of flexibility here with pricing. And then just like before, I'm going to be going in and adding some bullet points that focus on selling my product to the customer. My bullet points focus on telling the customer how this product is going to impact and make their lives better. And then again, come and edit the product gallery images. I forgot to remove the dark blue mug picture. Oops. <laughs> and then this time, instead of editing the big image, I'm actually going to go in and uh, change it to a different image. When we added this product from AliExpress, Ali Dropship pulled lots of photos for it and added it to our media library. So I'm going to change the image to be the simple photo of the black mug here. And then almost done, just like before, I'm gonna select the product category and then click publish. And then that's it. That's how you edit a product with variants. Step 17, add a store menu. 
Congratulations, we are almost at the end of this tutorial. Now we just need to add a store menu. We are going to have a main menu at the top of our store linking to our home page, our products, our contact us page, and our about us page. We will also have a sub menu that's going to drop down underneath the products tab in the main menu that is going to link to all of our different product categories. So let's do this. Go to your dashboard and click on appearance. Then select menus. Next type in the menu name. It doesn't matter what you call it. I'm just going to type in primary menu. Then click create menu. Check the box for primary menu, then click save menu. Go to the most recent tab and check these boxes like I'm doing here. Next you can drag and drop the menu items according to your preference. Click this arrow to edit each menu item. So I'm going to rename this menu item to home. And I'm going to update the name for this one as well. I'm going to change it to products. And I'm going to rearrange the menu to put the about us page before the contact us page. Next click custom links. Type in the URL of your first product category and then type in the name of your product category into the link text. Then click add to menu. So I'm going to drag the coffee mugs menu that I just created under the products menu. Next type in the URL of the next product category page and then type in the name of that product category in the link text. Then click add to menu. And again I'm going to drag the coffee spoons menu item we just created under the products menu. And then I'm going to finish this off by adding in the URL of the Travel Mugs product page and then I'm going to type Travel Mugs in the link text. And then I'm going to click Add to Menu. I'm going to drag the Travel Mugs menu item we just created under the Products menu to create our sub menu. Click Save Menu. Next, click on the top left side of your dashboard and click Visit Store. And boom, look at that, the menu items we created can now be seen in our online store. Thanks for watching this video tutorial, I hope it helped you. And if you would like to learn even more about dropshipping, then you should be sure to download our free ebook, The Six Steps That Six Figure Dropshipping Stores Follow To Make Over $10,000 A Month. You'll find a link on how you can download that in the video description below.